today in this video we are going to discuss about organophosphorus poisoning now before starting with organophosphorus poisoning i would like to discuss very few basic concepts which will make us easy for understanding the topic now talking about autonomic nervous system we have four groups of drugs the cholinergics the anticholinergics the adrenergics and anti adrenergics now in this organophosphorus poisoning we are basically going to discuss about cholinergic drugs its receptors uses and then the actions of organophosphorus poisoning now cholinergic receptors now in cholinergic drugs we have two groups of drug that is directly acting and indirectly acting now directly acting cholinergics are those which act directly on the nicotinic and muscarinic receptors while indirectly acting cholinergics are those which prevent the hydrolysis of acetylcholine and thus it increase its action in the synapse or neuromuscular junction i'll explain you we have nicotinic and muscarinic receptors the nicotinic receptors are of two types nn and nm the nm are present on neuromuscular junction in muscarinic receptors we have m1 m2 m3 m4 and m5 m1 is present on git m2 on heart m3 on rest all the places and m4 and m5 on cns now acetylcholine acts directly on these receptors like it's going to act directly on any of these m1 m2 m3 m4 m5 or nn or nm receptor and produce its action so it's a directly acting cholinergic now when it's released from the presynaptic neuron into the synapse it acts on the postsynaptic neurons receptors okay what happens is the termination of this action takes place by hydrolysis of acetylcholine by acetylcholine esterase okay so acetylcholine esterase hydrolyzes all the acetylcholine which is present and then the action subsides so any drug which inhibits this acetylcholine esterase will prevent the hydrolysis of acetylcholine and will indirectly increase the action so all these which prevent the hydrolysis are indirectly acting cholinergic drugs because they are directly not acting on the receptors but they are indirectly preventing the hydrolysis of other cholinergics so they are indirectly acting after this we'll quickly have a look on what are the actions of uh, all these receptors or what are the effects produced by cholinergics now when they act on neuromuscular junction they'll produce twitching and fasciculations in the skeletal muscle but later what will happen is due to prolonged depolarization we are going to have paralysis okay on heart it will decrease the blood pressure it will decrease the heart rate it will decrease the force of contraction that means it's basically going to suppress the activities on blood vessels it's going to cause vasodilation and will decrease the blood pressure on glands it increases the secretion of all the glands now by increasing secretion we mean increased lacrimation increased salivation and uh, increased or in sweating so all the secretions are increased smooth muscles on smooth muscles it causes contractions so what are the effects the effect it produces is like for example in git it will increase the contractions of smooth muscle it will increase the peristalsis and relax the sphincter so it will help in defecation okay then it will increase the contraction of the detrusor muscle okay and relax the trigonal sphincter so it will help in urination then on eye it will cause meiosis that is it is going to cause contraction of the pupil and then it will decrease the intraocular pressure as well okay so these are what the functions or what are the effects of these cholinergics now what is organophosphorus poisoning organophosphorus are the compounds like parathion malathion they can be pesticides herbicides and your insecticides so these are some of the drugs which are basically easily available and they used for agricultural and household insecticides pesticides and everything okay so the poisoning is very common now these organophosphates are your cholinergic drugs so they are going to produce 
all the actions which are produced by cholinergics and when the organophosphorus poisoning takes place these all effects are going to be beyond in the normal that means you'll have excess of all these symptoms okay so what are the harmful effects of organophosphorus poisoning or how will you identify this patient is actually undergoing organophosphorus poisoning you'll have increased in all these symptoms as i told you okay so what will happen is a patient will complain of increased lacrimation increased salivation increased bronchospasm will complain of myosis okay and blurring of vision okay then there will be fall in blood pressure there will be bradycardia or tachycardia muscular fasciculations later paralysis and that is eventually also going to lead to respiratory paralysis okay then we will have irritability disorientation convulsions coma and death basically the death is due to respiratory failure when your respiratory muscles or muscles of respiration undergo paralysis that basically leads to death now what is the treatment in treatment aspect there are three basic things first we have to eliminate the exposure that means we have to just move the person from the site of exposure of organophosphorus or compounds to a distant place that is we have to terminate the further exposure second we have to maintain a patent airway that means we have to maintain the patient's breathing and everything and third is the supportive measures okay then comes the specific antidote now from here the main thing in organophosphorus poisoning starts that is the specific antidote now in terms of specific antidote we have two things we'll be using we use atropin and then we use oxymes basically the specific antidote is oxymes but the first thing which we use in a patient of organophosphorus poisoning is atropin okay okay so the first thing which we use is atropin in a patient whenever we suspect him or her of organophosphorus poisoning now what atropin does is this is highly effective in counteracting the muscarinic side effects now uh, atropin is uh, let me tell you atropin is basically anticholinergic drug which has specificity against muscarinic effects okay so it basically acts against the muscarinic receptor and produces its anticholinergic effect so this is the first drug to be given okay will this is the first drug which has to be given and this acts against the muscarinic receptors now higher doses are required to antagonize the central effect because it's a competitive inhibitor okay it's a competitive antagonist you can say then it does not now it is not going to reverse the peripheral neuromuscular paralysis why because it only acts selectively on the muscarinic receptors it's not acting on the nicotinic receptors so it's not going to reverse the muscular paralysis it's just going to suppress all the muscarinic side effects which were produced now what were the muscarinic side effects which were produced here by muscarinic side effects i mean the fall in bp okay then vasodilation decreased heart rate increase in all types of secretions and in contractions in the smooth muscles myosis all these symptoms which were produced by cholinergics muscarinic receptors it's going to suppress all of them okay but it has no effect on this it's not going to reverse the paralytic state but it's going to affect all these things okay so atropin basically acts against muscarinic receptors and will only stop all these muscarinic side effects so atropin is the first drug which we give to reverse or stop all these muscarinic side effects okay we give 2 mg iv of atropin okay which is repeated every 10 minutes till the signs of atropinization appear that is till the sign of atropinization like midriasis appears so what we are going to do is 
टू मिलीग्राम आई वी एट ओपन टेन मिनट्स अपार्ट वील कीप गिविंग अंटिल वी हैव द साइंस ऑफ एट ओपनाइजेशन लाइक मिड्रियासिस ओके नाउ एट ओपन कॉम्पिटेटिवली ब्लॉक्स ऑल द मस्करेनिक इफेक्ट्स ऑफ ऑर्गेनो फॉस्फोरस कंपाउंड्स सो दिस इज जस्ट दिस इज द रोल ऑफ एट ओपन वी गिविंग इट जस्ट रिवर्स ऑल द मस्करेनिक साइड इफेक्ट्स ओके वाई दीज मस्करेनिक साइड इफेक्ट्स आर इम्पॉर्टेंट टू बी ब्लॉक्ड बिकॉज दे आर एक्टिंग ऑन हार्ट दे आर डिक्रीजिंग द हार्ट रेट ओके दे आर डिक्रीजिंग द फोर्स ऑफ कॉन्ट्रैक्शन दे आर इंक्रीजिंग ऑल टाइप्स ऑफ सिक्रीशन सो मेन effect of atropin is to stop all these muscarinic side effects now then but what happens is we have muscular paralysis also which is not being reversed by atropin so we need something to stop this muscular paralysis and reverse the thing that is we want the muscle back to its active form what we do for that is for that we need to give oxymes okay oxymes like pralidoxim obidoxim so these are the oxymes which are used to reverse the neuromuscular paralysis okay now the concept in oxymes is a little typical which we need to understand oxymes can only be used in carbamates oxymes can only be used in organophosphorus poisoning in carbamate poisoning we cannot use oxymes now why now this is acetylcholinesterase enzyme okay this acetylcholinesterase enzyme has two sites the anionic site and the esteritic site the anionic site and the esteritic site now the oxymes bind to this anionic site while the organophosphorus compounds bind to the esteritic sites so the op compounds or the organophosphorus compounds bind to this esteritic site of acetylcholine esterase and it causes phosphorylation of this site okay organophosphorus compounds inactivate this choline esterase by phosphorylating the esteritic site so the acetylcholine esterase gets inactivated it will not hydrolyze acetylcholine and acetylcholine's effect will increase so now what happens is we give oxymes oxymes have high affinity for the anionic site on acetylcholine esterase okay so the bind will high affinity to the anionic site and dephosphorylate the enzyme they'll dephosphorylate the enzyme now what happens is this acetylcholine esterase gets reactivated now one thing to remember is that early administration of these oxymes is necessary because this basically this phosphorylated enzyme undergoes aging okay when this undergoes aging it will become resistant to reactivation so it's important to give oxymes really fast because otherwise once the acetylcholine esterase gets phosphorylated and it undergoes aging then oxymes will not be able to reverse it okay now neuromuscular transmission thus it can be improved by giving oxymes now why we cannot use these oxymes on carbamate poisoning the reason is because the organophosphorus compounds were actually binding to the esteritic site so the anionic site was empty and oxymes could bind with high affinity to the anionic site but carbamates bind to both the anionic as well as the esteritic site when they bind to both the sides they leave no anionic site empty for the oxymes to act 
and so ex enzymes cannot bind and they will not produce their actions because the site is already occupied by carbamates hence they cannot be used in carbamate poisoning so the final outcome is that in case of organophosphorus poisoning we use two specific drugs the atropin and oxymes atropin to block all the muscarinic side effects and oxymes for regeneration of the muscle and stopping the muscular paralysis thank you